the only thing that makes me feel better is listening and playing this music. And that's what drove me. That's what, it still drives me to tell you the truth. You know, even through the years of therapy and stuff, I still have this angst inside that makes me want to get out music. Hello, Metal Pilgrims, and a very special welcome to all Anthrax fans on the show. For today, I'm more than happy to welcome one of the most extraordinary bass players in the world of heavy metal, Frank Bello. Frank, thank you so much for finding time to join me today. How are you? What the fr thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm fine. Thank you for asking. I'm, uh, having a I'm in my basement. Dude, I've been in my basement for this whole COVID time, right? You're yeah. looking for where I've been. I wrote a book here. Wrote music here. I did. This is where I, I kind of. My family's upstairs. Like you know, you you're a family guy. My family's upstairs, and I guess I'm still in this mode. You know what I mean? Even though thankfully things are getting better, I hope. But um, yeah. I'm still in this basement mode. I call it Bellows Basement at this point. This is like my my place to live. This it is what it is. It is crazy. I mean, I spent the same as you, right? I spent a year and a half in my in my little office at home, and now finally the borders are opening, so I could go on vacation, as I told you right before that. You know, I'm, on, I'm actually on a family vacation, but for the very first time, we're able to leave the country, and it's so so exciting. <laughs> How does it feel? I mean, I'm going to interview for you for a second. How, do, <laughs> how does it feel? How does it feel? Do you feel like? A little cautious. I'm a little cautious when I walk into some places, just to be because I'm. I guess I'm naturally like that. And, oh my God, is it okay? Is it okay? Yeah, man, it's so hard. I mean, we are very outgoing people. I'm, I'm actually Ukrainian myself, right? So we are very, you know, very outgoing. We love, you know, huge companies and stuff like that. But it's very yeah. hard after a year and a half of staying at home and being afraid of literally everything, you know, to start living a yeah. normal life. And I feel like to this very day, we were not able to, even though I got vaccinated like um, in the beginning of uh, May already. I flew to US a couple of times. I'm vaccinated too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, and, uh, and my wife as well. But still, you know, it's it's very hard. You know, I, we are washing our hands. Yeah, same thing, the same thing is taking, I think we'll all learn eventually to get, you know, move on with life, I hope, I hope. Okay. You know, Anthrax played our first show in Kadat, Wisconsin last week, which was, yeah. it was still, it was great. It was a great show, thankfully. Crowd was great, all that good stuff. But I was still a little cautious coming out of the uh, out of the trailer, the dressing room and stuff. Just, is it okay? You always want to give yourself the okay. You know what I mean? It's it's so hard. But I really do hope that we will be able to go back to normal life, whatever the new normal will be. Because uh, especially for, you know, metalhead community around the world. I always say that and I truly believe that you know, rock and roll and heavy metal lives in, you know, sweaty clubs and on festivals and not really in the digital world and uh, stuff like that. So I really hope that we will be able to go out there and, you know, do our thing once again. I agree with you. I'm, I'm in the same boat. I love, I, I love that we were able to play and I can't wait to play. I can't, I, I went to see, uh, a few weeks back, I went to see the Foo Fighters, the first show back I've, I've, mm -hmm. I've gone to. I live in New York. I went to see the Foo Fighters. Awesome. Great show. It was a great vibe. The whole thing. Um, it was just fun to feel it, feel the energy. You know that energy we're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I love that, man. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I cannot wait, man, literally. And I, I was actually supposed to see Anthrax uh, in my hometown on Kiev. When was that? 2020, right? Last year. But um, the show got yeah, canceled, right. unfortunately. Hopefully, we can reschedule everything. That's what we've been doing, like everybody else. You have to reschedule to when the borders are open and everything's okay. Everybody, yeah. you know, I can't wait. And I... I Look, we have to go with what, what they're telling us to go with, right? So cool. hopefully it gets better. Yeah. Absolutely. At this point, I think we all have to agree that we should start washing our hands, you know, and be a little bit more, you know. Just be careful. You know, we all have kids. Now. We all have kids. We all want to be safe for everybody, right? And that's yeah. that's the way it is. Just I want humans to get together again. I, I you know, I don't care what, what your beliefs are. I just want people to be human again and be and be cool to each other. That's that's what matters now, you know. Frank, first of all, Anthrax turned 40 a couple of days ago. Yeah. I still cannot Great. believe that. But congrats, man. I mean, this is this is huge. Um, and, you know, I I still cannot believe that, especially given the energy you guys transmitted through that live stream. I, you know, I was rocking out. It was 2 a.m. in Kiev, Ukraine, but I was like rocking out in my, in my living room. I, I enjoyed it a lot. You know, um, even when you said 40, and I've been saying this in other interviews, I, it doesn't register with my head, 40s. I get it, we're older. I understand the band's older. I don't feel like that at all. Mm -hmm. I'm hungrier more. I think the whole band, I, I was just with them last week. 
we're hungrier more now than ever, I feel. Just awesome. in the dressing room alone, we couldn't wait to, wait to get going. So what, what I think leads to a good a good time, not only for the future, for the next record, um, mm. I think, yeah, this is great. 40 years, and uh, it's it's been a great look back. And I've learned, uh, you probably saw this stuff on YouTube, right? All those little segments. Yeah, of course, yeah. It's, yeah. Been, it's been great to relive that stuff. And um, for me, watching other other people talk about it, even my own bandmates that I didn't know their perspective of some of the stuff of the 40 years that went in. So for me, it's also been a learning, a learning process for me about how they felt at different times, which was great. And so it, I learned a lot, not only, not only from the, within the band, from what other people were feeling. It, it's been a great, great run with this stuff. This is absolutely awesome, man. And I found that, you know, this mini series you guys did, you know, how many, however many were there was just amazing. I mean, it's great insight for all the fans, you know, like myself, of course, on into the real side of Anthrax, you know, that you never. So, yeah, so, yeah. I, think it's, I think it's even for the newer fan, I'm hearing from a lot of newer fans. My alarm keeps going off for some reason. I'm sorry. Oh, um, <laughs> the newer fans I'm hearing from, they, they didn't know the history. So it's great mm -hmm. that they can go back to this YouTube thing and, and, and this mini series and actually learn mm -hmm. what, what the band was about and, and really get educated, which is really cool. And to be honest, being in the band, I'm getting re-educated on it because a lot of the stuff you forget, right? Because it's been 40 years, right? So uh, I'm looking at it, it's like, oh, damn, that happened. I forgot that happened. All these memories are coming up. Like, and a lot of them just great memories because you're moving on in life. You have family and all that stuff. You don't think about this stuff. It gets you to have this one little time capsule you know, yeah. about that time and that segment of your life. It's like, wow, that was such a great time. And for me, it makes me look to the future and want, I want more of those good times, you know, and that's yeah. how I look at it. Yeah, I mean, we're all eager for you to have all those great times because that means that we are going to have them. <laughs> exactly. It all goes, you know, you know it, it's it's funny how it works, but the, the thing is with, with, with fans, I'm a fan of this music. So mm -hmm. I, I want to live, I live this music. I, I, yeah, I'm a musician, I'm in the band, I get it. But I also, I live this stuff. So I want people to feel like I feel. Like, when yeah. you, you know, when you hear this music, I want you to feel like the angst in me. I want to I wanna get that out, man, because this yeah. is what it's about. And um, I found that watching that miniseries, it, it got, it, I was feeling that, man. It really felt good to um, to relive a lot of that stuff and, and then carry on, you know, the next record and all that stuff. And yeah. wow, it's, it's, it was fun to watch. So if anybody hasn't seen that, give it a shot on YouTube. It's a lot of fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. hundred percent, man. So, and one thing that, you know, it's, it's great that you guys were able to do, do, do this live stream. But as I said, you know, for me, rock and roll and heavy metal, and especially Anthrax. Anthrax is very much of a, you know, live show band for me personally, right? It's about, you know, that energy that you guys transmit. So did you ever consider postponing it till the next year? Like what Judas Priest is doing right now? Well, it's all really up to the promoters, right? It's got to be safe. It really, they, they put the shows on the promoters, so we're really at their mercy. I, I Look, I want to play, but it's got to yeah. be safe. I want everybody to be healthy. I want everybody to be safe. I want everybody to have a good time. So when it's right, it'll be right. Uh, you know, I hope it's sooner than later, of course, like mm -hmm. everybody else. But I also don't want to put anybody in a bad position, right? I don't want anybody to get sick. I want everybody to come to the show and enjoy it. That's the whole yeah. thing. I want to play the show. I want to enjoy it. I want to see people having a good time. I don't want them getting sick. But I, I think it's coming. It's coming. And I think we're, hopefully, we're on a, a different page now. Yeah, right? Yeah. Like, we're, yeah. all, we're all on different pages, cross fingers, right? Um, I, I, I I just want it, I want people, because it's been such a, a rough time for the world, the whole world, man. It's been Absolutely. a rough time. Um, I just want people, I want to stop people, see people, feel good again because there's been a lot of negativity so for me i know but i've been through it in this basement <laughs> in this basement i i just want i want to get out of this basement i want people to feel good i and and move on with their lives that's i think we all want that how did you guys by the way come up with the set list for the show you guys played eight you know songs from eight out of 11 albums so and why did you not go with all 11 already it's such a tough thing you know we have is more of songs that we have a list for, but how many songs can you play first off, to be honest? Um, there's songs, look, and you know, we go by vote. We go by vote within the band. So we all mm -hmm. vote and whoever wins, you know, whatever the bigger mm -hmm. number of band members say. And we talk to management and stuff. 
that's the list we came out of and talked to fans. And that's the list that people really wanted to see, like the nuggets, mm -hmm. like Aftershock, Lone Justice, yeah. stuff like that, you know, um, keep it in the family. Songs like that that we haven't played in forever, right? Yeah. And, and um, it, they call them nuggets. Um, I, I enjoy playing them. I love going back. Believe me, there's a lot more songs that I would love to play. But how long can you play on a stream before people go, all right, that's enough. <laughs> you know what I mean? But to be honest, I'm just being honest. But I love the fact that we can get re get songs from different records and plug them in and just st and still sound fresh. Because that's everybody who's seen the, the live stream, thankfully, has really liked it. And yeah. said it sounded very fresh. It, 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 it sounded like the band was very fresh. I love to hear it, especially coming back from where we all came from. So yeah. you know, we, we suited up again and we came back and, and did this live stream for, for all of us. And uh, I thought it went over really well and it sounded really good. It, it, and uh, it, I thought it was the right thing to do just to give everybody a little taste of what's what's to come, right? Did you, did you guys consider inviting some of the, you know, past band members for future tours, you know, to celebrate the milestones? Sure, you know, it's all about, I I would love everybody to come, but you know what? It's all about getting, planning, all that stuff. So hard. It's, it's really, everybody lives in different places, right? So that's, that's a hard thing, to, especially in these times, you know what I mean? It's a really hard thing to get going. So this is, for now, this is all good. But uh, in these times we're living in, who knows if hopefully we don't get the whole world doesn't get closed down tomorrow. You know, uh, I'm hoping that we can keep going. Right. So, again, cross fingers and we can all move on with our uh, next page of our life here. And not to be a promoter of, you know, vaccines or anything like that. But guys, let's be just a little bit smarter about this then and just get it over with. You know, I'm I'm not one of those crazy people who goes, um, you know, proclaiming that Armageddon is near and we all have to get vaccinated unless, or, or we die. But let's be a little bit smarter about it because we all are eager to go back, you know. I just want people to be healthy. That's it. I don't care. It doesn't matter. The other side of it is I'm not, I'm not I don't tell anybody what to do. I just want people to be healthy. Really, exactly. what I've seen uh, with this stuff is pretty, pretty serious, man. And uh, just be healthy, man. Just, you know, be healthy. And you started speaking about this, right? You've mentioned it a couple of times already about the new record. So what's next for Anthrax, guys? I know that a couple of, you know, a, a year ago, I think you've, uh, some of you mentioned that the new record is in the making and it's going to be out sometime soon. So, you know, where's that training at, at right now? Well, when can and, we then, and then COVID hit. <laughs> <laughs> and then yes. COVID and stopped everything. Nobody, you know, you got to realize um, we can't get on a plane during COVID, you know, during the whole thing. We couldn't get on a plane and just travel to go jam. Like usually what yeah. would happen with an Anthrax record, Charlie, Scott, and myself would all congregate in one spot. Either I would fly out to LA or Chicago, or they would fly to New York, or we'd go to uh, or LA, Scott, Scott's house. We would all mm -hmm. get together and jam and create. That wasn't happening. And... I don't know if you've done Zoom, but it, you can't. The jamming on Zoom doesn't really work. I tried once, and it, it's so hard. It doesn't work. There's always a latency there. There's always a timing thing. It doesn't work the way we want it to work. So, you know, now that we're you know moving on, I have a, now I know next month we have a writing session, which is great. We're all going to get together in New York, and we're going to get together and jam. So, and we have I think we have a six, seven song thing right now that we're working uh, yeah. and finagling around. So uh, we're on a good path. We're on a good path. There will be another record in 22. So, and oh, hope, look, I have to say that hopefully, again, I'll cross my fingers, again. everything works, uh, stays, everybody stays healthy and things are open, you know, we'll see yeah. what happens. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I, I think we're all very excited to hear whatever, whatever new Anthrax has for us. And just the writing responsibilities how is it going to be divided is it all three of you the main writers who are you know pulling all the ideas together and then you're gonna see what's gonna come out of it uh, or is it do you have this time someone you know a main writer how you did before sometimes we just write together you know charlie writes a lot of music riffs yeah but we all have we all come in with riffs and stuff whatever is whatever works best honestly it's, it's open you just put in you bring it you bring your you bring your digital things in now you know you bring your phone in. i bring my phone i send emails to everybody beforehand right uh -huh. and you get the ideas together and you start working on them constructing them together what works with each other you try to blend them see how about that part for this part how about this for that and um you start building you bake the cake right you bake the yeah. cake and every piece keeps keeps coming the important thing is to digest it right to listen to it go home live with it 
That's the important part, to live with it and see if it works. See if it, you're still excited about it as you were in that moment. That's mm -hmm. how you know it has longevity. So if you, that's why it takes a little bit longer for us to write. You have to live with it because you can't just throw out something. You've got to live with it and say, oh, that feels as good as the day we did that. And that, that's what really matters. So how much material do you guys have after 40 years of, you know, touring the world that actually did not make it an album? There's always stuff that we throw out. We keep the good stuff for the most part. Once in a while, we'll have a side song that didn't make the record. And that usually is put out later on as a B-side or something or something special. But for the most part, we use all the good stuff. We put right. it all together. And then uh, there's a time where we know, it's funny you say this, because now we, there's a time where we know the album's done. You know, yeah. you can, all right, this is it. We have the record. You know, it, I guess after doing it all these years, oh, you many know years. when it's ready. And you're ready, in, let's face it, every record is your most important record, you know? It, every it rocker has said that since the beginning of time. <laughs> but that's the truth, and I believe in that. And uh, like this next record is our most important record. I can't wait to get in and dig in to this stuff, because not only is Frankie from Anthrax, the musician, the fan. I'm the fan. I want to hear, I'm curious to see what Anthrax is going to come up with. I, I, I love this music, man, so I'm into it. And we all do, and I think that, and as I said before, right, we all are ready to rock out to it, you know, in real world, man. At this, man, at this there, point. There, there's an appetite out there, you know, like, you know. Everybody's looking for the new stuff. Everybody, everybody can't wait to just let it all out. You know, we all can. We, we, we all, we're all ready for that stuff. Come on, um, I, I can't wait to be part of it. I don't I think my phone's messed up or something. It keeps going off. But um, <laughs> time for upgrade, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just. Uh, so I'm looking forward to being being with everybody again and, and, and just having a good time, man. Let's just do this. We learned a lot from this. Life is this short, man. Let's enjoy every moment. That's what exactly. I'm looking at. Where are you? Oh, it's good. I'm actually, this is the weirdest thing, but I'm actually in the middle of a sea resort in, in Turkey right now <laughs> with my family on the <laughs> That's great, man. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome, man. I'm a. So I'm like, you're, you're actually on vacation. Yes, I am actually on vacation. This is great. I don't want to take your time. You go with your go with your family, dude. Go. <laughs> They're all asleep, man. They're all asleep. I have two little kids. Um, one is almost four, and the other one is like nine months old. So oh, wow. by the wow. time it's like nine p.m., we're all exhausted and falling asleep. <laughs> You know what, dude? I totally understand. I've been there. I have one. I have a, my, my son's 15 now. I've been where you're at. It gets better. It does get I hope so. I really, really hope so. Because, uh, man, it's, it's really hard, actually. And I, I, I have a you know, like day job, a like full-time job all the time. But my yeah. wife, she actually, you know, by choice, she decided to stay at home with right. the two kids. And it's freaking impossible. I have no idea. I mean, like, sometimes I'm staying with her. Like, like I stay with them for, like, two hours. And I'm... I feel like all, my, all of my hair turns gray. <laughs> Dude, it's, 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 it's a ride. I, I always put it like that. It's a ride to have children because, look, we have lives. We're men, right? And yeah. I, I've been on the road a lot in my life and my son's upbringing. So my wife yeah. has been home a lot. So I understand. So I'm very compassionate when I see what they have to deal with. So it's, it's, it's a big deal, mm -hmm. man. You know? I mean, what I do is way, way easier than, you know, staying at home with kids. Like, seriously. And I tell her that every day. Yeah. Makes us appreciate moms a lot more, right? It really does. 100%. Yeah. And now I understand why my mom was always so tired. <laughs> yeah. I, I completely understand it. Yeah. I mean, for me, for me it, I'm, I'm all about, I'm pro-girl. So I understand the whole thing. The whole mom thing is beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. And I'd love to see it, you know? 100%. And I have two daughters. So... <laughs> Yeah, Woo! I have yes. to be all pro, pro, pro girls, right? <laughs> Are they gonna go for the third one or no? Yeah. <laughs> so when we just got married, man, I was like, I want three kids at the very least, you know. That like I, I always wanted a huge family. I never had one, you know. I really wanted, you know, a big family. And my wife was like, Yeah, okay, sure, let's go for it, you know. And uh, it was already hard to convince ourselves you know, to go for the second one. And now for the third one, uh, I'm, I mean, we might. It's a tough one because I know you probably, you probably want a boy now, right? You want to try for the third for have a boy, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, most likely. As long as they're healthy, nothing matters. As long as the kids are healthy, nothing matters, right?
And, you know, and just a little bit of retrospective here, right? If we were talking about writing new music, particularly looking back at 40 years of playing, at, you know, one of the largest thrash metal bands in the world, the biggest ones, uh, do you have any personal favorite riffs you've written for Anthrax? Well, just songs in general. There are great songs. Great that I enjoy playing, really. Yeah, I I, I enjoy playing, uh, and this this question has been asked a lot with a uh, with caught in a mosh, caught in a, <laughs> because of the I intro. Love, I love starting that intro. Yeah. Uh, I think it's it, I think Charlie wrote that riff, the main riff. But um, I love playing that because I watch what it does to the crowd. You yeah, know, because yeah. I have my head down usually, but I'm looking at the corner of my eye. And seeing the pe people's faces, that you, you don't understand, that gets me going, man. It gets me, let's do this. It's everybody together and we're gonna fucking rage. It's time, man, let's do this. So every time I start that, it's it's something special. That, so that's always one of my go-to immediately. Yeah. Now, I also like this, uh, I also like this um, song we, we, I always love playing in the end. You know the song In The End from Worship Music? Yeah. Yeah. I love playing that song because it's more, it's more of a, like an epic, Kind of song. It's a so it's, it's a big song with a lot of vocals, a lot of melodies, a lot of riffing, uh, and it's people take. I watch the crowds for that song. People take that song in. They take it in and kind of live through it. It's kind of fun mm -hmm. to watch that too. You see them singing, singing the lyrics. They know what it's about, and um, it's it's just another one of those songs I genuinely enjoy playing. And when that song's coming up. I say, oh man, this is a good time. You know, it's just one of those things. But those specific, you know, again, we have a lot of fun songs. Gung Ho, yeah, uh, you know, yeah. from from spreading. God, that's that's just Charlie's kick drums and that is just fun, right? It's just fun just to rage with that. So I mean, there's a lot of them throughout our career. We've had those, um, and I love to pick and choose. Sometimes you can pull them out of the set and you put them in different songs. It's so it's, it's fun, man. And um, you know. Again, looking back to the future, looking back to the future, whatever, whatever that means. <laughs> it's one of my favorite movies, man. So I add into I a reference anytime I can. I love the '80s. Dude, I, I love everything about that. Totally in on that. Yeah. <laughs> so in a couple of months, you get, you will re release your first autobiography book um, called "Fathers, Brothers, and Sons." I was actually able to read it a little bit earlier than most of other mortal human beings on this earth, and I gotta say that I loved it absolutely, man. I what? thought it was you very. Book? What you have the book? No, the PDF. Oh, okay, version. great, good. I'm glad, and I thank you for the kind words. And you know, and I have to say, I, I, it's weird for me. I've never written a book. Yeah. But this, this was the right time to do it. And why now? And all this stuff. First off, Joe MacGyver, my co-writer, we've been friends oh. forever. We've been friends for a long yeah. time, and we've been talking about this for literally years about doing mm -hmm. this. When is the right time? When is the right time? So when. I'm sitting in the same seat that I wrote the book with Joel. And so when that time, when this COVID thing happened, I'm in the seat and Joel gave me an, an email. He says, maybe now's the time. And it all made sense. I said, yes, this is the time. Let's do it. And we started and it was nonstop, dude. And let me tell you, Joel has a great way of picking my head where he knows to light a he sparks, sparks a memory. And then my mouth just keeps going. The, yeah. it, all the memories come back and it just all flowed onto the pages and it's it's a very real book. I say this book is, it's more about abandonment. Uh, like the story is my dad, uh, I w my family was abandoned. My dad took off when I was 10 years old. A lot right. of people can relate to that. Yes, I'm just telling my story with it. I was the oldest of five. Uh, mm -hmm. and so I went to go live with my grandmother. I, my mom took care of the rest of the four kids. Uh, I went to move into a house with my drummer, Charlie Benanti in Anthrax. Yeah. That started my music career. I saw he was playing. I knew he played. Uh, he started me on playing. And he said, and he's, he's the one that told me I was playing guitar. And he says, you're playing the bass parts on guitar. Why don't you switch, switch the bass? Literally switch the bass because of that. It all worked. And yeah. it, it's my upbringing. And, and really, the book is really about and how anybody can come from a, an empty place in their life, really. It's more than just a rock and roll book. It's really coming from, you can come from an empty, hollow place where, where yeah. abandonment left me and yeah. how music was my outlet. And really it gave me that, it gave me that drive to, to get out of that feeling that I had, that empty pit feeling that I had in my stomach and music made me feel better. And music for that matter, my heroes 
were like my father figures and my, my heroes were Steve Harris, Getty Lee, you know, uh, Geezer Butler. Those were my three main heroes as base heroes. So I looked up to them, Kiss, they were my heroes. I said, I want to do that. I want to do that. And that made me not concentrate on the bad feeling I had about the abandonment and all that stuff and how that felt. And it really was my outlet uh, about feeling better about myself. And this book, it, it relates to a lot of people from the people like you who have read parts of it um, and saying to me that they relate to it on their, their, their wavelength because it, you, it shows you could brush yourself off from no yeah. matter where you've been. And you could still, look, you could paint, you could, you, could write, you could write a book, you can do anything you want in your life. You can get out of that position you're in brush yourself off and move on and concentrate and have a tunnel vision towards where you want and what your goal is. And that's kind of what I did. And I look, if I can make one person at, at any book I sell, one person feel better about their life and move on, it's all good, right? Exactly. Man. And actually, that, that's what I was going to say, that this book was so encouraging. You know, I, I didn't go what you went through. And I think that every story is very individual. You know, that you can't really have two of the same lives going on. There are some similarities, some differences, of course. It is very much of, you know, it has this uplifting feeling when you finish reading it. You know, even right. when you're talking about, you know, these, you know, crazy memories, like you're talking a lot about Cliff Burton, you're dedicating an entire, you know, entire chapter to him and what you personally felt, you know, when he found out about his death. But um, this feeling of uplifting, you know, that you have to live your life right now and, you know, get out of this misery no matter what. I think this this is just this is just amazing, man. Yeah. Thank you. And, you know, and, and again, there's so much negativity. We all would just look at what the world has been through recently with this COVID thing. It's, it's enough of the negativity for me. It really, I just want to, for me at this point, I want everybody to feel better. At this and look, I'm look, I'm not this guy, I'm not an angel. I've had my my hit, you know, my my bad demons in the past too. But um I just at this point I've learned a lot. I've learned yeah. a lot. And if if somebody's in a bad place, why wouldn't you want to help them out of that bad place? That's the way I'm looking at life now. Where if this book can help somebody, yeah, it's got the great rock and roll stories in it. We have a lot of fun, great rock and roll stories in it, but you know the truth of the matter is, um, I want to I want to lift people up instead of knocking them down. There's no negative. I don't want any negativity. I'm not interested in that. That's not where I'm at. How did you guys go with your co-writer about writing it? I mean, did it just go through your entire life chron chronologically, or how do you? Yeah, if you know Joel, Joel is very. I mean, he's written 32 books at this, this <laughs> point. He's great. He's awesome at what he does, um, and that's a kiss ass. I mean, he better pay me for that line. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's he's awesome. He's my friend. I have to say, at first, he's my friend. He's my friend yeah. who knows me. He knows the history of anthrax, so it all really worked out well. He had he had little things that he just throw in, and I have to say, he knew how to trigger my memories. Mm -hmm. um, because let's face it, you've had this forty year career, right? Yeah. And not wow. every memory is going to come back to you like that, right? What Joel's great at is really lighting that fire under that memory, and mm -hmm. once he did that. It came out, dude. It was really fun to expand on it and also really fun to read. I kind of was reliving these times. Like when mm -hmm. I'm talking to you in the book, when you read the book, what I wanted to do, I said, the first thing I said to Joel was, I want to have this book like I'm sitting at a bar with the reader, having yeah. a beer and talking about my life. That's exactly what I want this to do. And it's set up like that. To I mean, Imagine me and you, the reader. Yeah. Having a beer at some bar, some dark bar, having a good time, and we're just talking about my life. And you're hearing everything. And maybe the things you didn't know, my, my, the things in my anthrax life, my personal life. My, it's literally an open book. I mean, I really put it all out there. Um, unfortunately, the, 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 the death of my brother, my brother Anthony was murdered at 23 years old. There's a full chapter on that, of the trials, and literally the trials and tribulations of that. R very rough time in my life. Um, how going to a dark place with that i would you know there was a time where um when that thing happened to my brother my brother was murdered and i had uh, a different mind but nothing mattered music didn't matter anything i was just going to be um kind of a vengeful vengeful i was going to go after the person and uh, i'm glad i thought differently of it but it was a very dark time in my life uh i'm glad i thought i came out of that because i didn't even know who i was at the time um, it was a very scary time to uh, to be to be at, and uh, 
I'm very glad that I didn't, I didn't make a bad decision at that time. So I got out of that mode and uh, you read it all in the book. It's, it's all in the book. It's, it's a, it's a, a look at me. You probably didn't know this, the other side of it. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm glad I'm here right now talking to you. You know? yeah. And I think, as I said before, I think it's very encouraging for anyone who's going through similar situations at, the, you know, at, the, at this moment, whether it's bullying, you know, you talked about this, you know, a couple of times, you know, whether it's, you know, death of a relative or, you know, or someone close to you. Not exactly. you know, just and pain, pain in general, you know, uh, and just this stuff, whatever it is in your life, I think for me, what I've learned after all these years you can brush yourself off. You just, you think it through, get that tunnel vision, focus on one thing that you really want and get yeah. out of it, get out of that zone. That's what, I mean, Ed, look, this dude, this is after years of, of, of therapy. This is after all of me really analyzing myself, you know, and just saying, all right, this is, this is how I, I can do it. And I found a way. And I guess this is what I'm putting in the book. I found a way to do this. You can do it. And it doesn't have to be music. It could be art. It could be writing, you know, poetry, whatever it is. Whatever you want, just being the best you can do, whatever you want to do, but just get out of that empty feeling. That's what's the important part, because that emptiness sucks. I, I just don't want anybody to feel like that. That's the truth. And speaking about therapy and uh, overall, you know, th th this kind of procedure. So, so you speak a lot about your temper, right? You, you say yourself that you're a very tempered person, right? Who gets off very quickly and your wife is actually the one who stops you. So can you say it? that this temper is what helped you grow into this amazing heavy metal musician. It's part of it. Look, and thank you for the kind words, but it's part of the angst. And I, go, I use that word angst a lot because yep. I think the anger from my upbringing, whatever you want to call it, and this is through therapy and all this stuff that I've gone through. The, the fact that my, you know, I was, we were abandoned. That's, that's an angry thing. You, you don't know why. You want to understand, did I do something wrong? Did I do, mm -hmm. you know, was it my fault? Um, why did this happen? Why, why are we, why are we poor now? Why can't we afford food? All yeah, that 10 year old kid cannot get that. I mean, yeah, exactly. so you, you want to understand the rug is pulled from under your feet, right? You, you have to, you want to understand why is this all happening? You're shocked because you're 10 years old. You don't know how to deal with this stuff, right? You're all, you know, what makes me feel better? What makes me feel better? Music, music. So when you say that, that make me yeah, it did. It pushed me into music because the music made me feel better. It got that feeling out of me. It, it's like, mm -hmm. man, the only thing that's making me feel better in the shit place that I'm in right now, this, this gutted, empty feeling from the abandonment, whatever you want to call it, the only thing that makes me feel better is listening and playing this music. And that's what drove me. That's what it still drives me to tell you the truth. You know, even through the years of therapy and stuff, I still have this angst inside that makes me want to get out music right to make me feel better i think it's a call it an addiction whatever it is but it's a, maybe it's a therapy but it absolutely helps me writing music and getting it all out honestly this is this is this is great man and i here's to 40 more man i'm i'm raising an imaginary glass to you. <laughs> Very much. Thank you, brother. I mean, I don't want to keep you here for too long. So just a couple of more questions, if you don't mind, and then... Yeah. Uh, yeah. No worries. And then you're, 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 this is great. I'm having fun. It's all good. Yeah, great, man. Uh, I'm glad. Thank you. What is one craziest story which happened to you on the road with Anthrax? There's a lot of crazy stories. My God. Um, one of the... One, I, you know, I always go back to this. I was talking about this with somebody else. Um, one of the funnier, it's funny and scary at the same time, but um, Anthrax was a touring with Iron Maiden. I remember mm -hmm. one tour, we were touring with Iron Maiden, which I loved them. Probably one of my one of my favorite metal group in the world. I love them all. They were my friends, all the good stuff. So we were touring, and I remember <clears throat> the side of the stage had carpet on it. And, you know, Anthrax is pretty active, and we were going around working the crowd and having fun. And I remember this part of the, I didn't realize part of the, the rug on the stage didn't have stage under it. So it was, a, it was a very high stage. So I went like a, like a fool and I jumped onto the side. I went straight down into the pit, dude. I, all of a sudden you saw the bass neck up and I bounced off of like two bouncers and two, two of the guys, two of the security dudes. One, thank God grabbed me before my head hit. It was, and I just remember laughing. So that, that was a really crazy, a crazy time because I don't think I've ever fell that far. Until you know the inevitable, where you feel like you're going to crack your head at any second. You're, you're just falling. So I had, the, I had this big piece of wood in my hand, which is the base. I'm like, I can't even move. I can't do anything. I'm just bouncing off of people. That was a truly crazy time because I just didn't see 
there was no stage under that rug. It was just this little piece and I, I went right through it. And I remember it. And all of a sudden my bass neck was up in the air. I'm, I'm looking at it falling, bouncing off of these poor guys. I'm like, and thank God one of them caught me. But that was one of the crazier times because I don't even know if there would have been another show after that because if I would have okay. broke my head on that, it would have been over, right? <laughs> Frank, thank you so much for your time, man. I really, really, truly appreciate it, man. I cannot wait for the new Anthrax record. I'm, I, I cannot wait for any, everyone else to read the book and share their thoughts of it because I thought, as I said, it was absolutely amazing. And right. to see you guys live on the stage one, once again, man. Any last message for the fans, man? First off, I want you to have a great vacation with your family. Thanks, bro. Thanks. Right? Be healthy and be oh, safe. Yeah. Look, I want everybody to be healthy and safe so we can get out together and hang out on, and see some shows. Let's do this. And thank you. Thank you for the 40 years of staying with us. And 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 just thank you for being friends, honestly. And, and I mean that in the realest of ways. Thank you for being there for us. Uh, we'll always be there for you, and I, I look forward to the future, man. Thank you so much, man. Frank Ballow, everyone. Thank you so much, Frank. Keep rocking, man. Peace, man. You be well.